So another year goes by and it's another year where the upcoming number one draft pick prospect is likely to be the best one we've ever seen. It's a trend that I, I first remember hearing in about 2010 with David Swallow to the Gold Coast Suns. He was considered the best number one draft pick prospect at the time. There was a bit of that narrative, I think, with Tom Boyd as well in 2013. Jamara Ugelhagen in 2020, and then in 21, we had both Horn Francis and Dacos. Last year, that tr conversation was somewhat there with Will Ashcroft. They were at least comparing him to Nick Dacos. And then this year, perhaps to the greatest extent we've ever seen, the number one draft pick prospect this year in Harley Reid is supposed to be the best draft prospect we've ever seen. Now, first off, as an aside, I know that a bunch of those players I just mentioned ultimately didn't go number one in their respective drafts, but I would probably point out the fact that they were all father-son or academy picks. For various reasons, if a player is a father-son prospect or an academy player, they usually see a little bit of a slide down the pecking order for whatever reason. Obviously, Nick Dacos went pick four in his respective draft, which I think if he was an open draft pick, he arguably would have gone pick one or two. But with this upcoming 2023 draft with Harley Reid, we're arguably seeing the most draft hype we've ever seen. So much so that people are saying that as a 17-year-old bottom rager last year, had he been eligible for the 2022 draft, he would have been a contender for pick one with Will Ashcroft. Obviously, we know Cadman actually went pick one in that draft, but that was arguably because GWS needed a key forward. They traded up for that pick and Will Ashcroft was a father-son, of course. So had he been just like an open draft player last year, Will Ashcroft probably would have gone pick one uh, depending on which team had that pick. But on Harley Reid, I remember seeing highlights of this kid last year playing as a bottom major in the state championships where he was obviously a year younger than uh, a lot of the other players who were eligible to get drafted that year. And the physicality of this player and the natural body strength that he had was the first standout attribute. The kid's a beast. He's not oversized. He's, he looks AFL ready already and he did 12 months ago too, but his body strength and his ability to shrug off opponents at ease, that's what makes him the most Dusty-like player we've probably seen in a long time. And arguably that's probably because he uses a lot of don't argues in the way he plays as well. But that is his body strength. So so what kind of player is he? Well, he's primarily a sort of midfielder forward, but he's been talented enough to play across all three lines in the past. He's a contested beast. That's probably his number one standout attribute. He hunts the ball and wins it and shrugs off opponents very, very easily to a level we've never seen at a junior level before. He's got a good level of athleticism to support that though as well. He's a decent runner. That's probably one area he could get better at, particularly two-way running, but covers the ground really, really well, runs the lines, hits up targets quite well. He likes a hang as well, so he's really, really strong overhead, which means you can play him forward and down back as well if you need it. So he's this incredible blend that you rarely see in a young prospect where he's fantastically skilled, much like a Dustin Martin. He's got the athleticism to support that and he's incredibly strong as a contested player as well. He's got a fantastic rap sheet already last year as an underager winning an All-Australian jumper in the state championships. He played a lot of half back for Vic Country and then played midfield or forward for Bendigo. But most recently we saw him tested against actual men when the Australian under 18s took on Port Adelaide's Sandville reserve side. So coming up against grown men where his athletic gifts wouldn't be such a factor. He still had 21 touches. He had seven clearances he kicked a goal and he did all of that just playing three quarters. So how valued is he going to be to recruiters this year? Well, I think the, the simple answer and simple indicator for how good a prospect is, is how much a team is going to be willing to trade for them at the trade table to acquire pick one. Now we saw it a couple of years ago with Horn Francis. Uh, I think Adelaide offered like a top 10 pick plus a later first round pick and then a second rounder for Jason Horn Francis, which got knocked back. This year, the talk of a similar trade for Harley Reid is already starting to gather momentum and it's interesting. Uh, Callum Toomey has come out on the Gettables podcast and highlighted Melbourne as one of the suitors potentially for trading for pick one. And I think that's based mostly around what they've actually got in terms of picks and not because he's heard that they're actually in Interested. But in the podcast, he mentions that the Demons hold uh, what is currently pick 6, 16, and 25 this year. And they've also got their future first round pick of their own, which, you know, judging by how good Melbourne are at the moment, it's probably going to be on the wrong side of 15. But he suggested all of those picks could be on offer to the side that wins the wooden spoon for pick 1 and the right to select Harley Reid. Another side that I think could come into the mix here would be Gold Coast, and not because I think that they'll go for Harley Reid, but they've currently got uh, pick five as it currently stands in this upcoming draft, and they've got a highly talented academy pick in Jed Walter, likely to go in the first five or so. So what I think they'll do is they'll try and pick five for a couple of uh, two to three second rounders uh, to get enough points to match a bid, potentially. So then Melbourne could use the picks they have to trade for pick five, and then suddenly they've got picks five and six and maybe some change 
to offer for pick one. But it's an interesting conversation uh, what will happen. First of all, we don't know who's going to have the wooden spoon and ultimately pick one as well. There's probably a handful of clubs still in contention. I think most people consider Hawthorne the most likely scenario. There's a strong theory that they are gunning for pick one to acquire Harley Reid because they've seen the red the tea leaves 12 months out and know that this kid could potentially finish off their rebuild. West Coast is another contender. Obviously, they're second last at the moment with their injury crisis. It's hard to imagine things getting better for them. Out of the two clubs there, I think Hawthorne is the most likely to want Harley Reid on their list. When you consider the attributes of the, the players they've already got in their young midfield, Jai Newcomb, Will Day, Josh Ward, Cam McKenzie, and James Warple as well, that's a young midfield there that Harley Reid could really complement as a player that is nothing like any of them. And that is also true of West Coast. However, there's a few other factors for an interstate club. Harley Reid's from Vic Country, right? And Vic Country kids tend to go home a little bit less than the Vic Metro kids. So comparatively, he's a more safe bet than say a top Vic Metro kid, just looking at, you know, historical data. That being said, I kind of feel like the higher up the pecking order in the draft you are, the more likely you are to just want to go where you want to go. And that's why I think Harley Reid undoubtedly is gonna be a flight risk if he goes to West Coast. For where West Coast is in comparison to Hawthorne as well, needing probably more first rounders than say one top liner. I think West Coast would probably do the conservative thing and trade for potentially three first rounders to accelerate their rebuild, which is something Hawthorne probably wouldn't be looking at doing. There's also North Melbourne to consider in this, not because they are a likely chance to win the wooden spoon, it's not impossible, but I would bet against it pretty strongly. But they hold picks four and 12 in this upcoming draft, having dealt with Point Adelaide and Jason Horn Francis last year. So they are a contender to potentially trade up with uh, more likely a West Coast than Hawthorne, you'd think. But let me know in the comments what you think of A. Harley Reid, how good do you think he's going to be? And secondly, what do you think either your club or, you know, a potential tie that's going to win the wooden spoon should do in this situation? Do you think you should take pick one, take the best player available, back yourself in to keep him and develop him? Or do you think going for three bites in the first round would be a better option? Either way, this Harley Reid kid shapes up as an amazing prospect and it'll be very, very exciting to see him play in the AFL next year. As always, guys, welcome your opinions. Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.